is equal to x divided by, oh, mm. oh, that is so nice. I, no, I chose random numbers. I didn't think about that, okay? This is a total coincidence. I did not, I did not install the mathematics thick mod on my blackboard, okay? Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> nice! A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Welcome back to our video. Before we begin, one or two little PSAs. I recently created a pretty emotional video, if I may say so myself, pouring my heart out before my whole community. Um, check it out, link down there in the description. It was really important to me to talk to you about this um, and everything that was going on. So definitely make sure to check it out if you haven't already. In the same sense, um, I'm selling my anime merchandise at the moment, my weep figurines and also my Dushinjis and the like. So if you're interested in stuff like this, make sure to hit me up. Link to my client and sign down there in the description is basically German Craigslist. You can hit me up if you're interested in any of those. Other than that, we are going to take a look at this equation today. 1 divided by 3 factory plus 1 divided by 4 factory is equal to x divided by 5 factory. And I don't know. A question of that sort just with 4 factorial, 5 factorial and 6 factorial, it really doesn't matter at all, you'll see during the video, has been recommended to me somewhere on Facebook, I believe, out of mathematics, I can't remember, it really doesn't matter. And I thought this was a funny question and we are going to solve this at first and then we are going to take a look at the generalization. Can you figure out the x? Try it out for yourself. And now we are going to dive right in. By the way, video sponsored by Brilliant amazing stuff over on their website. Check it out. More information at the end of the video and now we're going to dive right in. So how would you approach a video like this? Not a video, <laughs> problem like this. How would you approach a problem in a video like this? So, um, <laughs> goofy stuff happening here behind the scenes. Um, okay, so, the cool thing about factorials is that they are defined recursively, meaning if we have something like 4 factorial, that's the same as saying this is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And the cool thing about the factorial is, as mentioned before, it's recursively defined, namely, we got 3 factorial in here, so 4 factorial is the same as 4 times 3 factorial. So we can actually recover the 3 factorial in this expression that we have here. Now the same thing goes for 5 factorial. We can rewrite 5 factorial as being the same as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, recovering the 3 factorial in the process, meaning 5 factorial is the same as 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. Which brings us a lot of steps ahead, because this is good. This is really good if we rewrite this. This is 1 divided by 3 factorial plus 1 divided by 4 times 3 factorial is equal to x divided by 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. Now we could factor out the 3 factorial on all terms and since 3 factorial is the same as 3 times 2 times 1 which is 6 which is most definitely not equal to 0 because it's a successor of 5 and yeah, <laughs> 5 is 5, um, <laughs> it's not equal to 0. If we were to figure it out we could actually cancel it out on both sides. Factoring it out on those terms it's going to give us 1 over 3 factorial factor onto 1 over 3 factorial gives us 1 plus 1 divided by 4 is equal to 1 divided by 3 factorial times x divided by 5 times 4. We are going to leave the 5 times 4 as it is for now. Now if we were to cancel it out we're going to be left with this very simple equation namely that 1 plus a quarter is equal to x divided by 5 times 4. Now, we could expand this fraction right here, okay? If we were to expand it, we are going to get 4 divided by 4 plus 1 quarter, which is the same as 5 divided by 4, meaning overall we are going to get um, 5 divided by 4 is equal to x divided by 5 times 4. And now you can see that 4 is a common factor on both sides, or 1 quarter, I should say. If we were to multiply both sides by 4, it's not equal to 0, it's going to be cancelled out. And then multiplying both sides by 5 is going to give us that x is equal to 25. And thus we have solved our original equation, which is good. 25 satisfies what we got right here. And do you know what the cool thing about 25 is? It's a square, 5 squared. 
Now, do squares have anything in common with this problem at all? Let us take a look at the generalization. Now, what does this problem exactly look like? Well, if we take a look at the factorials, you're going to see that the argument of the factorial are three consecutive numbers, three, four, and five. So if we were to generalize this problem, this is what you do as a mathematician, you're going to generalize in some kind of way. This is what I did immediately. I really didn't tackle the original problem at all. I tackled the generalization and then I just plugged my initial conditions in. Namely, we can rewrite this more generalized as 1 divided by, we are going to start off with n factorial plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial is equal to x divided by, in our case, n plus 2 factorial. And now we can take a look at the recursive definition once again that we got here for the factorial. Namely, we can rewrite the n plus 1 factorial as being n plus 1 times n factorial. This is the same that we did here. And the n plus 2 is the same as n plus 2 times n plus 1 times n factorial. Meaning once again, if we go through the whole process once again, n factorial is by the way never equal to zero. We can cancel out the 1 over n factorial on each and every term, leaving us overall with 1 plus and the term which is left here is 1 divided by n plus 1 is equal to x divided by n plus 2 times n plus 1. Okay, so we got pretty far and this just by the same procedure that we employed beforehand. Now what we can do is we can expand this fraction by n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 and then if we bring it on to a common denominator adding those together gives us n plus 1 plus 1 divided by n plus 1 and this is where a bit of magic happens because n plus 1 plus 1 is the same as n plus 2 divided by n plus 1 is hence equal to x divided by n plus 2 times n plus 1. And now we are where we were before. This equation right here, this part of the equation. Once again, n plus 1 is not going to be equal to 0 for now. Only in the case if n is equal to negative 1. But this won't happen. I think that's the borderline case. We're going to talk about this in a minute. But um, if we were to factor out the 1 over n plus 1 or cancel it out on both sides by multiplying both sides with n plus 1, we're going to be left with n plus 2 is equal to x divided by n plus 2. Multiplying both sides by n plus 2 is going to give us indeed that x in our generalized equation is the same as n plus 2 squared. Isn't that kind of cool? So the generalization holds and it's going to give us a square as its solution. So meaning, if we were to take a look at 1 divided by... Um, <laughs> 67 factorial plus 1 divided by 68 factorial is equal to x divided by... Oh, mm. oh that is so nice! I, no, I chose random numbers. I didn't think about that, okay? This is a total coincidence. I did not. I did not install the mathematics thick mod on my blackboard, okay? We're gonna get as the solution that x is equal to mm, 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 nice 69 squared. For, for example, just choosing random numbers, you can do the same with 418, for example, just another random number. But yeah, this, work, this works out, this checks out. Um, pretty nice, right? <laughs> Indeed, pretty nice. Now, I was thinking a bit further and I was thinking, well, this is all about natural numbers right here, natural number inputs. And I just now told you that what about negative one? This is a case where all of this doesn't work out. What about other numbers? Like one half, for example. What about non-integer values, non-positive integer values? What about one half? Then it gets a tiny little bit funky. If we were to take a look at, for example, the equation one divided by one half factorial, um, plus 1 divided by 3 halves factorial is equal to x divided by 5 over 2 factorial. 
What is this going to evaluate to? That's looking kind of funky, right? I mean, we got a factorial in the normal case. How can you have half integer values? Well, this is where our boy the gamma function comes in. If you're not familiar with the gamma function yet, take a look in, at my analytic number theory playlist. Now, the gamma function is just a generalization to basically the whole complex plane, de depending on your de definition of the gamma function, be it the integral definition or the Gauss or the Euler definition of the gamma function. But in a general case, the gamma function, so gamma offset, is just a generalization of the factorial to non-integer values. Gamma offset is the same as z minus 1 factorial. And this gamma function abides by the same rules as the regular factorial. Namely in the sense that if we were to rewrite this a tiny little bit, z minus 1 factorial is, think back, this is the same as z minus 1 times z minus 2 factory, but z minus 2 is the same as, okay, so we get z minus 1 times z minus 1 minus 1 factorial. Now if we take a look at the gamma function once again, gamma of z is equal to z minus 1 factorial. Now what about this part right here, z minus 1 minus 1 factorial? Naturally, this turns into z minus 1 times gamma of z minus 1, which is once again just this is all called function equation for the gamma function, but it's overall just the intrinsic property of our factorial. Now we can make use of this definition once again to plug it into our original equation and generalize this a bit more to even non-integer values. And then we will see if this for example holds, if it also holds with the same rules as our original solution. Now, it really doesn't matter which part of the gamma function we plug in, be it with pluses or minuses or whatever. If we just take a look at um, 1 divided by, now let me think for a second, we are always raising it by 1 in some kind of way. We are going to take gamma of z plus 1 divided by gamma of z plus 1 is equal to x divided by gamma of z plus 2. If we were to take a look at the function equation for the gamma function, what we are going to get is 1 divided by gamma of z plus 1 divided by, and now we are going to reduce the argument by 1, giving us z times gamma of z. And here we are going to use the function equation two times. So this is going to give us, on the one hand, z, times, okay, this was a uh, gamma of z plus 2, z um, minus 1, yeah, times, uh, no, z plus 1, this is the first iteration, z plus 1, reducing it by 1, then the second iteration is going to be just z, gamma of z. And now if we were to cancel out the gamma of z, the gamma function, just like regular factorial, can never be equal to zero. This is just something which is not gonna happen. One over gamma of z is gonna give us overall one plus one divided by z is equal to um, x divided by z times z plus one. And if you were to solve this equation once again, you are going to be left with the same solution to our original problem. Let us calculate, uh, ca calculate for it real quick. Um, we are going to get um, z plus 1 divided by z is equal to x divided by z times z plus 1. The 1 over z and 1 over z is going to cancel out, giving us just being x is equal to z plus 1 but the whole thing squared, which is going to abide by the same rules as we did before, considering that gamma of z is defined as being z minus 1 factorial. So it really only depends on our um, initial values, basically. But this overall means that we can actually make use of the gamma function or half integer values or whatever values, per factorial, e factorial, to get ourselves an expression, namely x in our case, is going to be just n plus 2, so in our case n is our 1 half, um, plus 2, but then squared overall, giving us um, now 2 pl plus 2 is going to give us 4 overall, um, 4, so 5 over 2 squared is going to be the same as 25 
over 4, which is going to be the solution to this equation, for example, to this x. And I think that's a pretty cool equation and a very cool property um, of this problem. And now you can think about a few other things like which values of z can you actually plug in? That means taking a look at the simple poles of the gamma function, but we got the reciprocal of the gamma function. So maybe every value for z holds. That's a little exercise to the viewer. Um, and also um, what I was thinking about, what if we didn't take one step? So consecutive numbers, but numbers which are two apart, three apart, and so on. Can you find a generalization for that? So one divided by n plus one divided by n plus k is equal to x divided by one plus 2k, for, for example. Can you find a generalization for that? You can. This makes use of the subfactorial, for example. So there are a lot of funny things you can play around with. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you want to see more factorials, calculus, algebra and the like, then why not make sure to check out the contents of today's sponsor Brian, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. I, for myself, do thoroughly enjoy pointless stuff like this. Like seriously, this really doesn't enhance your livelihood in any kind of way. It doesn't make you money, but what it can do is it can bring you joy. And it really did give me joy to go through generalization like this and putting my boy gamma function here pretty unexpectedly. And if you are like me and you are just the average person enjoying the average mathematics problems, then Brilliant might be the perfect fit for you because over in Brilliant you can find tons of mathematics, physics, computer science, all things STEM problems, which you can solve now. You can go over there take a look at any of the courses, really doesn't matter what it is, and start solving problems today. And in the process, as a little added bonus, expand your horizons in the STEM fields by a big margin. No matter if you want to brush up on all topics that you have once learned in high school, or maybe you are a student at high school at the moment, and you want to be ahead of the class, maybe even ahead of your teacher in terms of knowledge or maybe background knowledge that even your teacher really doesn't have. Because with Brilliant you can get yourself visual interpretations, like maybe your teacher doesn't even have visual interpretations of derivatives or maybe the gamma function or the like. Then Brilliant is seriously one of the best sources to learn something new today. About 70 interactive courses await you over on their website. And as mentioned before, in basically all topics STEM, if you feel like learning something about geometry today, they got you covered with basically everything, starting off with just the regular line Euclidean axioms, and then going over to regular Euclidean geometry, planar geometry, talking about triangles, and then over to spherical geometry. And once you start talking about spherical geometry, maybe you get interested in relativistic things too. So the physics section of Brilliant. They're all pretty much interconnected and they give you little hints that you could also check out, for example, special relativity too, in order to basically get a better understanding of the geometry section too, or vice versa. And it's just a lot of fun to play around with their interactive graphics and their visuals and everything that you can do over there. And I advise you to not take my word for it, but to rather try it out for yourself too today. If you make use of the link down there at the top of the description, print.org slash mess, you're gonna get a 30 day free trial of awesomeness. And I promise you, it's gonna be an awesome experience for you. And if you feel like this could turn into a long lasting relationship between you and Brilliant, then you can actually make clicky clicky on the linky linky and get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a fantastic deal considering how much content they're adding on a regular basis and how much content in general is already available to you. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. Now if you're just watching and if you did enjoy this video, then subscribe to the channel Redesu and also subscribe to the Flamis Wood channel where I play around with my rock hard wood. I'm the rock hard wood daddy. And up at the next video, I wish you guys a... Day. See ya.